Jake Sully is a handicapped war veteran living a monotonous life in the States. His daily routine consists of regretting his life choices, getting into bar fights, and reminiscing his past glory days. But little did he know that his life is about to turn upside down, inside out. Blue dabu dee dabu da. One day, some officials approach him and mention that his twin brother Tom has been murdered. Jake is devastated by the news, but the officials want to hire him to complete his brother's unfinished work. Turns out that Tom was planning to investigate a newly found planet called Pandora that apparently supports life like Earth. Jake thinks about the proposition for a while, but when the officials mention that he will be paid in millions, he agrees right away. Following this, he is put into six years of cryosleep to prepare for the mission. When he awakens, he finds himself with several other passengers on the way to Pandora. Jake was given this special chance since he and his sibling have a perfect genetic match. In the next scene, Jake and the rest of the crew are transported to Pandora in a shuttle. Everyone is told to to wear full face respirators since the planet's atmosphere is too toxic for humans to survive. Only 20 seconds of exposure will kill them in four minutes. After landing on the mysterious planet, Jake right away goes to a military briefing where Colonel Miles Quaritch is speaking to the gathering soldiers and several accompanying civilians. He informs them of Pandora's native people, the Navi, and adds that if they want to survive, they must abide by the laws here. Later, Jake visits a research facility where he meets biologist Norm Spellman she gives him the first glimpse of his own programmed avatar. It is then explained that if a human connects to their avatar, which is a genetically engineered Navi hybrid, they can blend in on the planet of Pandora and act like the Navis. Following this, as Jake and Norm walk into the science department, the program's science lead, Dr. Grace Augustine, awakens in a specially made pod that connects her to her avatar. Norm tries to introduce her to Jake, but she seems angry and storms out of the room. She's probably just upset because she has become the alien. Grace then confronts the base commander and a representative of the Resources Development Administration, or the RDA, Parker Selfridge. RDA is a company that is in charge of all military and other employees stationed at the colony. She makes an attempt to convince Parker that Jake is useless since he lacks working legs and is not a scientist. However, Park responds by saying that Jake is the only person who has genes like his brother, Tom, which is essential in triggering his avatar. Plus, he's good looking. It's good for the movie. Stop asking questions. The next Next morning, Jake and Norm are connected to their avatars back in the lab. Soon after, Jake's avatar awakens in a separate room. Surprisingly, he can now move his legs and walk around, something which he hasn't done in years. Elated, he ignores his physician's orders and runs to the recreation area, where several other avatars are participating in sports and enjoying themselves. Later, when Jake's avatar sleeps, the link is broken and he awakens in his human form. Next, he meets the colonel and strikes up a conversation. Jake inquires about the true purpose of their visit to the planet, and the colonel finally lets him in on the truth. Apparently, Pandora houses an extremely rare form of rock, known as unobtainium, which is worth billions on Earth. The best and the largest unobtainium rocks are found inside the community the Navi people reside in. But since they will not see their land being taken over by humans, Jake will have to somehow convince them to move away. The colonel mentions that Jake has three months to perfectly blend in with the Navi people and persuade them to find another home. If the mission is successful, Jake will be given a new pair of legs. However, at the end of three months, if the Navi people still refuse to move, a military team will be deployed, which will likely wipe out the entire race. The next day, Jake connects with his avatar and flies over Pandora's surface alongside Grace, Norm, and some others. Soon, they land at a place and begin collecting flora samples. But Jake, who is very new to the unusual surroundings, becomes disoriented and stumbles into a field of flowers. Just then, a strange animal, a thanator that resembles a panther, comes from behind and chases Jake, isolating him from his companions. Luckily, he manages to save himself by diving into a waterfall, with the thanator roaring over him. Jake's crew looks for for some time, but they soon leave when it starts getting dark. At night, having lost all his weapons, Jake can be seen sharpening a long stick into a spear. Meanwhile, a female Navi is observing him from above. She prepares to shoot him with an arrow, but stops when a mysterious glowing entity lands on her bow. At the same time, a group of viper wolves attack Jake. This time, it seems as if he has met his doom for sure, but the female Navi surprisingly steps forward to his aid and chases the wolves away. However, she is not pleased with Jake 
Jake and instructs him to return back to his rightful place. She then prepares to leave, but Jake starts following her. He also requests that she teach him survival skills. At first, the Navi refuses to help him, but when several of the mysterious glowing entities from earlier land on Jake's body, she becomes impressed and takes him to her place, Omati Kion. She also introduces herself as Neytiri. However, when they reach the said place, the Navi people immediately become hostile towards the outsider. In particular, Neytiri's fiancé and the next in line to the throne, Sute, wants the hybrid human executed immediately. However, Neytiri stops them and brings Jake to her parents, who also happen to be the tribe's king and queen. Jake explains to them that he is a fighter and that his goal is to learn about their culture and tradition. When the queen hears this, she pricks his chest and licks his blood. She then deduces that he has a pure spirit and asks Neytiri to be his teacher and help him. I mean, his name is Jake, he's clearly from Canada or some shit, but he seems alright. After a ritual gathering, Jake is brought to his bed, which encircles him like a cocoon. As he falls asleep, human Jake is revived in the chamber. In the morning, he shares his unreal experience with all the scientists, including Grace. But once again, the colonel reminds him that he only has three months to complete his mission. The next scene shows human Jake reporting on his experiences via a video log that he records after each day's activities. He talks about how his avatar is busy training with Neytiri. One day, she asks him to choose a scound, a strange-looking animal, for his ride. Initially, he is skeptical about the idea, but after a lot of insisting, and because it's free and mounts usually cost 40 gold, he chooses one and attaches his neural cue to its antenna. He then learns how to steer the scound and enjoys riding it. Later, Human Jake informs the Colonel and Parker about the enormous home tree, the Navi's residence, and a significant unobtainium deposit beneath it. The Colonel sees an opportunity to destroy the tree, but Jake requests he be allowed to negotiate with the Navi and convince them to leave. In the meantime, Grace learns that Jake is being manipulated, so she relocates him to the Hallelujah Mountains, a secluded location of enormous floating islands that are holy to the Navi. It turns out that she is on Pandora just to research the place and wants nothing to do with the unobtainium rocks. One day, while Jake and Neytiri are flying on their scouts, they are unexpectedly pursued by a Torok, a vividly colored flying mountain monster that hates anything that flies. Fortunately, they manage to escape to the home tree, and Neytiri shows Jake the remains of the former Torok. She reveals that the last person to ride a Torok was her great-grandfather, who did it to bring together the five Navi tribes during a tough period. Neytiri adds that it has been decades since anyone even dared to ride a Torok. With the days passing by, the Navi tribe finally starts accepting Jake as one of their own, and they even hold a ceremony to honor him. After the ceremony, Neytiri takes him to a place of prayer, where they utilize the nerve endings at the end of their long hair to establish a connection with a tree. Oh, mama. Neytiri informs him that he may now pick a woman as his wife. Jake thinks for a while and reveals that he wants to marry her. Neytiri is clearly astounded, but she accepts the proposal and the two kiss. After this, the new couple spends their night together under the tree and Jake gains back consciousness in the lab. This complicates things, thinks Jake. Once you go blue, nothing else feels true. In the morning, Neytiri awakens to falling trees and notices a number of bulldozers around, destroying the place. She realizes that they are being attacked and tries her best to drag Jake to safety. Meanwhile, at their remote spot, Jake is getting ready to link with his avatar, and when he finally revives, he climbs onto one of the bulldozers and tries to stop it. When nothing else works, he smashes its camera system, compelling the soldiers to fire at him. Fortunately, Jake manages to escape and reach the home tree. Back at the base, the colonel watches the surveillance tape and identifies Jake as the avatar who attempted to thwart their mission. Enraged, he then enters the room and looks for Jake and Grace, while the bulldozers continue to work and destroy the Omati Kaya's sacred place. Meanwhile, the Navis assemble under the home tree and resolve to battle the invaders. Jake and Grace protest against it and make an effort to stop them from doing so. However, the warrior, Sute, tries to kill Jake after knowing that he and Neytiri are mated for life, despite him being betrothed to her. As the situation heats up, suddenly both Grace and Jake's avatars fall unconscious as the links between them and their human forms are abruptly broken by the Colonel. In the next scene, the RDA and military commanders are confronted by an angry Grace, who discloses that the Navi can access a network made out of Pandora's trees that has more neurological connections than the human brain. Just like mushrooms, she and Jake then state that the Navis will never move out of their place, the home tree. Hearing this, the colonel decides to invade the home tree and use gas bombs to drive the Navi away. Alarmed, Jake begs the base commander, Parker, to allow him to use his avatar so that he can convince the Navis to leave. Parker obliges, but 
but he warns that Jake has only one hour to achieve his objective. Once he is back among the Navi, he informs them that they are under invasion from humans and admits that he is one of them. Neytiri, hearing this, pushes Jake for betraying her trust. I thought you were just a real heavy sleeper, she says. The other Navi are equally devastated, so they abduct Jake and Grace as hostages. After this, they prepare to fight the humans, who have arrived in a large number of flying ships. Then, the war begins. The Navis try their best, but their bows and arrows are of no match against the humans' heavy artillery. Unfortunately, after several explosions, the home tree is eventually brought down, which kills several Navi in the process. During the chaos, the queen unexpectedly returns to the captive humans and releases them. She then begs them to save their tribe. Wasting no time, Jake approaches Neytiri and tries to console her, but to no avail. During the assault, Neytiri's father is mortally wounded, and as he passes away, he demands that she take his sacred bow and lead his people. Suddenly, Jake and Grace return to their human forms and are immediately detained for treason. Norm is also apprehended for attempting to stop troops from shutting down their avatar forms. Meanwhile, the remaining Navi regroup at the Tree of Souls. Back at the base, Jake and his friends are secretly released by their team pilot, Trudy. Then, they fly away in her spacecraft and attempt to reach the Navi. Unfortunately, along the way, the evil colonel notices them and shoots at the spacecraft. Grace is seriously injured and it appears as if she is going to bleed out. After a while, the group reaches the floating mountains, where Jake jumps inside a pod and awakens as his avatar. Knowing that the Navi will not accept him, he then makes the audacious choice to call upon his scout and go on a mission to locate the Toruk. His strategy is simple, but can easily result in his death. Jake then slowly approaches the dangerous Toruk from above and jumps onto its back. When I saw this in theaters a decade ago, this part made me go, Whoa! Then, in the midst of the Omatakayan ritual, we see him riding the Toruk to the Tree of Souls. This shocks all the Navi, and they finally welcome him back with the utmost respect. Then, Jake asks the warrior, Su Te, for assistance in battling the human army, and the latter complies. With the Navi now by his side, Jake attempts to save his dying friend Grace, and he even enlists the Queen's help. However, all of their efforts go in vain, as Grace succumbs to her injuries. This fuels Jake's anger, and he motivates the Navi to unite and chase the humans away. By the end of the day, they approach their rival clans and gather around 2,000 additional Navi. Meanwhile, the colonel notices the Navi in large numbers and shifts his attention towards the Tree of Souls. So, he orders his men and marches towards the location. But, to his surprise, the Navi also show up, both on land and in the air. Jake is flying on his legendary Toruk, while Tsute and the other warriors are ready to sacrifice themselves for their land. Soon, a deadly battle begins, and dead bodies start piling up on both sides. But this time, because of the scouts, the human artillery slowly begins faltering. In the midst of all this, Jake is pursued and shot at by the Colonel's Dragonfly ship. Fortunately, Trudy arrives there in the nick of time and opens fire at the Colonel, providing Jake with enough time to flee. On the other hand, Neytiri's scout is shot down and killed, while Tsute is also killed in the explosion. From the ground, Neytiri observes the devastation and starts panicking. In the meantime, a large bomb ship approaches the Tree of Souls. It seems like the humans are going to have their way after all. But suddenly, through what's left of the surrounding forest, a battalion of Titanotheres, Pandora's heavily armored dinosaur-like animals, arrive and start attacking the soldiers. Overjoyed, Neytiri rejoins the fight with several of Pandora's species behind her. Surprisingly, when a Thanator appears nearby, it bows to her submissively. Then, as the military's ground forces scatter in confusion, Jake raises his Toruk into the air to meet the bomb ship. He then throws grenades at the ship, forcing it to crash far from the Tree of Souls. Jake also launches explosives at the Colonel's spacecraft, but the latter escapes in an AMP suit before it catches fire and explodes. Unfortunately, the Colonel discovers himself at Grace's makeshift camp. He tries to turn off Jake's avatar pod, but at the same time, the Thanator that Neytiri had linked with attacks him. Surprisingly, he successfully kills it with his suit, trapping Neytiri underneath it. But before the Colonel gets a chance to assassinate her, Jake arrives at the scene in his avatar. The two then start going back and forth, but in the end, the colonel gains an upper hand. He is about to finish off Jake, but at that very moment, Neytiri gets up and shoots an arrow at the colonel, impaling him through the chest. Without wasting any time, she fires a second arrow 
arrow, which instantly kills the colonel. However, before his death, he has already done enough damage to Jake's pod. Because of this, human Jake is awake, but having difficulty, both breathing and trying to get a mask on. Thankfully, Neytiri shows up and assists him in getting his mask. She then cradles human Jake and gets a good look at his real body for the first time. Oh, so cute. In the last scene, Jake signs out his final video log, telling us that he has been chosen to permanently transfer his consciousness to his avatar. The film concludes with a ritual in which Jake awakens in his avatar form, with Neytiri watching over him. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.